Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of The Chrysalids by John Wyndham. So this is sort of a sci-fi classic by an author. I've enjoyed his stuff so far, so I am very much looking forward to getting to more of it as well. I'm going to read you the blurb as always, then I'm going to go through and check out my tabs. I don't have too many, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... The Chrysalids, John Wyndham. A world paralysed by genetic mutation. John Wyndham takes the reader into the anguished heart of a community where the chances of breeding true are less than 50% and where deviations are rooted out and destroyed as offences and abominations by the author of The Day of the Triffids. So, the first thing I tabbed actually was his, uh, his bio here. Um, because I didn't know a lot of this stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and read the whole thing. Um, he's from Edgebaston, which is near where I grew up. as part of Birmingham, but yeah. John Wyndham was born in 1903. Until 1911, he lived in Edgebaston, Birmingham, and then in many parts of England. After a wide experience of the English preparatory school, he was at Bedows from 1918 until 1921. Careers which he has tried include farming, law, commercial art, and advertising, and he first started writing short stories intended for sale in 1925. From 1930 until 1939, he wrote stories of various various kinds under different names, almost exclusively for American publications. He has also written detective novels. During the war he was in the civil service and afterwards in the army. In 1946 he went back to writing stories for publication in the USA and decided to try a modified form of what is unhappily known as science fiction. He wrote The Day of the Triffids and The Crack and Wakes, both of which have been translated into several languages. The Chrysalids, The Midwich Cuckoos, filmed as The Village of the Damned, The Seeds of Time, The Outward Urge with Lucas Parks, and Trouble with Lichen, all of which have been published as Penguins. His most recent book is Consider Her Ways and Others. So, let's get into The Chrysalids. So, uh, our main character here, uh, he dreams of a city, and he tells his sister, and he asks her where it might be. She shook her head and told me that there was no such place, not now, but perhaps, she suggested, I could somehow be dreaming about times long ago. Dreams were funny things, and there was no accounting for them, so it might be that what I was seeing was the, the bit of the world as it had been once upon a time, the wonderful world that the old people had lived in, as it had been before God sent tribulation. But after that, she went on to warn me very seriously not to mention it to anyone else. Other people, as far as she knew, did not have such pictures in their heads, either sleeping or waking, so it would be unwise to mention them. And that does a great job of setting the scene, so our world is the world that the old people lived in before God sent the tribulation. Mm. Our main character, he's struggling to do something because they've given him loads of shit to do, and he says, I could have managed it all right by myself if I had another hand. My voice must have carried for silence fell on the whole room like a clap. And again, because of these mutations, you can't have like innocent little sayings like that anymore because people think you're blaspheming against God. And so here, I think this is cool because this kind of tells you about where it's set. It's set in Labrador in uh, Canada. And um, it also covers again a little bit of this, this unknown, we don't really know what the tribulations were. Well, I guess we do know it was when these like mutations started to happen. Um, but this is a nice little bit of world building, I thought. It was said too that nobody was sure that in the time of the old people, Labrador had been a cold land, so cold that no one could live there for long, so they had used it then only for growing trees and doing their mysterious mining in. But that had been a long, long time ago. A thousand years, two thousand years, even more perhaps? People guessed, but nobody really knew. There was no telling how many generations of people had passed their lives like savages between the coming of tribulation and the start of recorded history. Only Nicholson's repentances had come out of the wilderness of barbarism, and that only because it had lain for perhaps several centuries sealed in a stone coffer before it was discovered. And only the Bible had survived from the time of the old people themselves. So one of the people who has one of these mutations, they have this like psychic power basically. Um, and she's getting married. And this is causing all kinds of uh, trouble. And I just thought this little paragraph was interesting. She wouldn't listen to us, I told him. Now she's gone further. She won't respond at all. She says that's over. She never wanted to be different from normals. Now she wants to be as like them as she can. It was the first real row we've ever had. She ended up by telling us she hated all of us and the very idea of us. At least that's what she tried to tell us, but it's not actually that. It's really that she wants Alan so badly that she's determined not to let anything stop her from having him. I, I never knew before that anybody could want anybody else quite like that. She's so fierce and blind about it that she simply doesn't care what may happen later. I don't see what we can do. You don't think that perhaps she can make herself live like her norm, cut out the other altogether? It'd be too difficult, Uncle Axel asked. We've thought about that, of course, I told him. She can refuse to respond. She's doing that now, like somebody refusing to talk, but to go on with it. 
It'd be like taking a vow of silence for the rest of her life. I mean, she can't just make herself forget and become a norm. We can't believe that's possible. Michael told her it'd be like pretending to have only one arm because the person one wants to marry has only one arm. It wouldn't be any good, and you couldn't keep it up either. And then uh, they discover that Petra is like a super psychic, and she can communicate with people as far away as New Zealand, which is just called Zealand. I don't know why I'm blurry. There we go, I'm back. Sorry about that. And then they discover that Petra, who is the child, she kind of has like superpowers uh, with the psychic ability, and she can reach people as far away as New Zealand, which in this is just called Zealand. Oh yeah, so they find out that it's Zealand, or Zealand. Um, uh, but they're like, no, Zealand makes sense. It's a land in the sea, but no, it's Zealand. Um, and the reason is, is because Petra can reach these people, um, but she can't read. So she's trying to get them to spell out where they're from so that she can then copy the marks for the people that she's with, you know? Um, but yeah, The Chrysalids by John Wyndham. I don't have a huge amount more to say to it. I did really enjoy it though. It's an interesting take on like religion, basically. And I always like books that do a good job of kind of handling religion. Uh, I would give it a pretty strong, like a, probably like a, yeah, well, if we're going strong, 3.5 out of 5, or a week 4 out of 5, I can't decide. Um, but yeah, just another great instalment in Wyndham's oeuvre, and I'm um, really enjoying all of the books of his that I've read so far. I think I've read four now, um, and this one's this one's definitely up there. Very, very food for thoughty. I uh, also read this at the same time as reading uh, God Is Not Great by Christopher Hitchens, which was kind of a nice little tie-in as well. So yeah, but that's what I made of The Chrysalids by John Wyndham. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. If you read it, hit that like button. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.